Now then, Marley. Last night on uh, BBC Two, there was a programme called Meet the Ukippers, and uh, they sent the BBC sent a camera crew to Thanet, down south somewhere. It's where Nigel Farage uh, is going to be standing, uh, running for Parliament in the near future, and uh, they sought out some UKIP members and supporters. And uh, attempted to successfully to paint some of them in, in quite a bad light. One in particular, she's was at the time of filming a UKIP councillor. She isn't anymore. She's been thrown out. Um, she was banging on about Negroes and how she didn't like them because they have flat noses or something. She was a complete barn pot, the woman, there's no doubt. Um, and she needed booting out. But you have to understand what a politically charged word Negro is. Uh, for background on uh, Celebrity Big Brother recently the old guy who used to be the shopkeeper in Coronation Street Reg was his character name don't know his real name uh, he used the word Negro in the presence of Alexander O'Neill the soul singer, the American guy and he was uh, duly called into the diary room and told off about this in no uncertain terms and they said if he used that word again he would be thrown off the show um, to put that further into perspective, the lady who went on to win the show, Katie Price, at one point was having a discussion, a fairly frank discussion, with a couple of her housemates concerning the nature and amount and size of items that she had stuck up her former husband's rectum. That um, seem seemingly was deemed fit for broadcast, but the word Negro isn't, so, you know, those are the rules. Uh, very, very politically charged term. Now, by her own description of, uh, you know, her feelings towards um, black people, uh, she appears to be suffering from, if there was such a condition, it would almost certainly be called negrophobia. Um, and if that condition is such a large part of her life, you would think that she'd possibly have mentioned it uh, prior to the film crew being there, uh, you know, at some point during the previous 20 years when she was a Tory councillor, uh, I would think that. Uh, if she didn't, if she did mention it, she didn't get thrown out of the Tory party for holding those views, that's for sure. Um, she was thrown out of UKIP because uh, it seems to me that UKIP are, are held to a higher standard than the other parties. You know, there, there are all sorts of crackpots lurking in amongst the other parties um, and as and when they see the light of day they don't automatically get expelled as is the case with with UKIP um, anyway this this program it was kind of fairly well put together but of course money's no object for the BBC uh, because we pay for it all and they, they have um, they're on a mission the BBC and the, the bulk of the, the rest of the media and the other the main parties uh, to get rid of UKIP at all costs. It seems to me that they're pretty much all in it together. They're up to their eyeballs in sex scandals and stolen money and they don't want any honest, i.e. UKIP people, getting in amongst that and blowing the whistle or doing something about it, as they have done in the European Parliament. Um, so, you know, I get why they do it. Uh, it doesn't make it right, but it, it, it's, I understand where this, this stuff comes from, but in any case, um, as the credits were rolling at the end of the programme and as social media was just about to burst into flames of uh, self-righteous anger on the part of all the anti-UKIP people about what this woman had said, this, this former Tory uh, ex-UKIP councillor had said, uh, just exactly at that moment came the announcement that Jack Straw and uh, Malcolm Rifkind, one Labour, one Tory, had been caught bang to rights in an undercover sting operation, setting up effectively bunks for themselves. You give them five large and they will make sure something goes your way via uh, the use of their um, connections. So it's... It's cash for access, cash for questions, call it what you will. It's been done before. I don't think it's been done by two such high-profile people. And uh, it hasn't been done so, so that it came to light and torpedoed an expensively produced <laughs> UKIP attack piece that had just aired on a national broadcaster. 
Uh, I'm not a religious person, Marley, but if I was, I, I would have to say it looks to me like somebody up there likes you, Kip. <laughs> it's just down here we seem to have a bit of a problem, but that problem is becoming less of a problem day by day. Uh, people are waking up and smelling the coffee, it seems, in droves. So, there we are, let's go and see what Mum's got for our tea, should we? Fault you, Kip. You know it makes sense. <laughs>